this is a big deal. I agree. I agree. I, I was very excited about this this moment coming up, and uh, it all came about as a one conversation, right? All of a sudden, you have a conversation, and the world can change. Yeah. Jody, turn on your video, honey. Maybe if I give a bit of background as Jody's appearing, and I've known Sean, I'm not sure, maybe a couple of years. How, yeah. how long did you start your, your group in Facebook? Uh, I started it August 7th. I started the day before the Lions date on, on, in 2018, which is really cool. And did we know each other before that? Um, I think a little bit somewhere. I think, uh, I think, yeah, we did. Cause you were the one of the first ones to, cause like, like you were like one of the first admins in the group, you know? And yeah. So like that group had nearly 50,000 in less than 18 months. Right. Mm -hmm. That seemed pretty fast. I mean, I've had groups for five years that stayed under 50 people and never went anywhere. So <laughs> yeah, had a really good, had a good run, you know, like it did its job and it, it brought a lot of us together and I, you know, maybe that, maybe it was, it was, it was meant to really just find a core group, you know, really maybe. And then at, cause when I created Elijah, you know, with intention and when I built it, I remember just seeing this, this wall of light where things could not get into the group that didn't have, you know, our highest good. And that shield lasted for a long time until, you know, just like anything that lasts forever, but it did it. It was a good run. It was a good group for a long time. So, but it brought me and you together. And it brought a, a lot of, it brought, you know, nearly 50,000 people together across the planet. I think it did. I think it did its job to me. Well, it, it became pretty much the only group that I was tracking. I was, I, I generally keep to my own work and I, I'm trying to be isolated in terms mm -hmm. of at least what I'm doing. But I mean, I found that, uh, you know, we need human contact. And, and just the, the idea of 5D high vibe that you were tracking a very high end type of people and the types of discussions you were having were seemed very much in alignment with my own belief system and, and how I th see about the world. And more importantly, I think that your ability to consistently provide motivational messages to find beautiful art, to share information that isn't anywhere else is is at a very high level you're you're very consistent with very high value information and i think that that's why it grew so quickly because as as the leader of the group you were giving information that people wanted mm -hmm. yeah and so so yeah. maybe we should have a little bit of context uh, for jody here thanks for coming on so quickly and with no notice showing the spontaneousness <laughs> yeah. of the moment <laughs> uh but last week sean and i had spoken and it was the second time in real life that we were speaking and I've been tracking and in his group for a couple of years and very impressed by the type of knowledge that Sean shares and his background. And he wanted to bring you on as seeing someone he immediately wants to bring into this idea. And, and it's, it's like both Sean and I are holding knowledge and information that is, let's say, about the new paradigm, 5D, like a new pathway for the evolution of our species. And like many other people on the planet, each of us is holding a piece of the puzzle. And up until now, we've sort of been on our own or talking on the internet, but not really creating those bonds of friendship and allyship where each starts to get access to the gifts of the other and the, the ability to, to create wealth together, the ability to... Uh, have people on your side who actually know who you are and want to utilize, you know, how good you are at doing whatever you're doing. And so he, uh, I'll, I'll go over to Sean to say, you know, why don't you tell Jody why you wanted her here? Well, <clears throat> Jody, I just know that your, your strong point, honey, is, is uh, like building communities and you know about land, you know, a lot of things about the 3D world. That I don't know about like, you know, like when talking about, you know, getting land, well, we're going to need like water and electricity and how to look, I don't know how to do any of that stuff. 
And I know you want to build a community like I do, and you, we have the same visions with different visions, but the vision is to get people out of that system and pull them over into a more unified way of living that's conducive to, to that, that works for everybody. And I want to include you on that, honey, because that's what we came here to do. And Elijah, you know, he's, he's our family and he has the same ideas and, but different ideas. We all have the same idea of what we see and we all see it just a little bit differently, but we can incorporate a trillion ideas and everyone and put it and create the most beautiful world. And so that's why I thought of you, you know, because you have a lot of good things to say. I may not agree with a lot of things and we don't always agree, but I know that you have the betterment for humanity and I know that you know your shit, you know, like I know my shit, Elijah knows his shit and you know your shit and we know all of our shit. We put our, our ideas together. We just collaborate yeah. all that shit. <laughs> collaborate all that shit. <laughs> Absolutely. So can you tell us, can you tell Elijah about what you do and kind of what, I don't know, I'm just kind of telling him about you, honey. Well, what I do for my 3D job, as Sean would put it, is I do um, community development and uh, and um, home sales and then community management afterwards. So essentially I work for a, a corporation that is owned, it's owned by the, by, Quad Rail, which is the BC pensioners, I do believe. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's essentially, um, although I do enjoy aspects of my job and um, managing the community, bringing in amenities and bringing the communities together um, as communities, I would rather do it um, on a little bit of a different platform. <laughs> where it's not people having to pay the landowner to live there. Mm -hmm. So how did you guys meet? Facebook. Um, Facebook, yeah. We met September 30th, or was it October 30th, honey? September I think it's September 30th, 2018, or 20, 2017, honey? 2018. 2018, yeah. It was right after I made the group and I saw like, you know, suggested people you may know and I looked at her and was like, I know her. And uh, we, now here we are, almost three years later. Yeah, it's cool. That's, that's quite a jump from meeting to right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Not much yeah. in between, just... Uh... Clear sailing, I imagine, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, just like every relationship, just peaches and cream. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's, hey, everything that's can... absolutely been crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I can see Sean really wants to get into the details of that. So maybe we could. Uh... Like, this is what I want to ask you. This is something why, which I think is very, very uh, important here. Me and Sean were about to start. Uh, there's another guest, Keisha. She may show up, who is about to show up. And then the last second, Sean says, OK, well, let's let's bring in Jody. And this is life, right? All of a sudden, you think you're about to do something, and it changes. And an another human is in there. And you go from one-on-one -on -one space to group space. And you, you go from sort of just one and this other person into, holy cow, like there's two people now. And it's not quite the same and, and these people are a couple and they have these romantic life and maybe they'll get into a fight online in front of everybody or maybe they get along really well or maybe maybe they actually deep down she's really pissed at him right now and she's really mad that he brought her in but he's here and now she's like all these dynamics that are are at the essence of human interaction yet we have this large political situation where we're faced with imminent doom we have we have these freaking nutballs who are sort of imposing these these new draconian measures on us and yet most of us again are sort of in our romantic dynamics 
And mm -hmm. sometimes those romantic dynamics are very in alignment with one another, but sometimes, you know, the someone doesn't want to participate in the conspiracy theory. Someone doesn't want to have to deal with, you know, a huge government infrastructure that's trying to control us. So I, I'd like to ask you guys about how to balance romantic life and talking and having that deep romance versus working on the big picture stuff. Maybe we could start there. I'll interview you two. We, you know, I contributed to being friends first. Like when we met, Jody was married, you know, she, and she had her 3D life and we were just friends. It never was anything more than that. And then later on, you know, she was going, you know, the, the, the split of her, you know, I won't get into detail, it doesn't matter, but she was going through divorce, you know, and then we became a little more, you know, connected. And I don't know, have, you know, and I've, and I've had my share of, you know, we've had our share of, uh, of me, you know, of Lon before and some distrust and we cleared that, we healed that. And man, like, it's been a really- If I can just interject here. So, um, so we're healing that essentially. Yeah, there has been some um, roadblocks with our relationship being that we aren't physically together. It's a long distance, it's hard. Hard to see one another, especially now um, with this crap. But um, we are healing from it and um, and growing, right? So we we have the same objective, essentially. We want people to be able to live in communities where they feel safe and free and connected to one another, and everyone contributes. And um, contributionism is a big part of what the new earth communities are going to look like for sure because everybody has something to contribute and yeah uh, and we know that we're like family you know like when you, you know you you build this identity of elijah and sean and jody and steve and stacy but then when you get through those layers and you just can see like i can see your soul elijah and it's just like mine man like we're very ancient, you know, like, as I like to put, label it, galactic souls that come to these systems in great times of need. And we bring specific keys and specific codes and types of wisdom and then personality to the system to enter, you know, to, to put a little bit of light here and a little bit of light there and the codes. And then we, we're all family. Me and Jody are always, like, I love Jody. Like, I'll always love Jody. Like, and she, you know, she has this, a place in my life and always will and always has. And, you know, like, how I contribute is like, she loved me when I didn't love myself. And so on the, then I was like, you know what? I'll always love you. And that right there, like, made me think, you know, when I was still using drugs a little bit and just doing things not in accordance with my soul, she stuck by me. She didn't judge me and she loved me. And that, I, I never experienced that. I never experienced unconditional. So what I see is unconditional love. And then that made me be like, well, you have all of me now. You got me. So I, I want to give the same back in return to her. You know, so she showed me that love. And when she could have been like, you, man, you're, you lied to me. Oh, you used some drugs and all this other, you know, BS. And then she... Everyone else would have walked away and has, you know, because that's how we were conditioned. I'll love you until I'll love you, but I only love you if you do, you know, these all these conditions. And she said, "Fuck the conditions, I forgive you." It's not been easy for her and I, but we worked through it. And so, you know, I want the best for her, and I, you know, and now it's time to go build. It's time to take all the make us an issue. Now let's make the issue how we. How do we create a better system for the humans? Well, first, for all of us who want to come over, but it takes all, all of us to get together, brother, like you are. So I commend you for your work, man. It's really, uh, I'm inspired. <laughs> Maybe we could give a bigger context to Jody. The last time we were speaking, uh, we were looking at 
uh, the larger idea called Planetary Guardians, where mm -hmm. it's a media game. And it's a media game that distinguishes between paradigms. So there's a plan, like I'm Captain Sweep and I got this very secret plan. And I'm looking for like 143 allies to then duplicate a thousand times to get the uh, to get the plan going. And the plan is sort of like all these superheroes that are fa have fallen asleep and they're waking up and we're starting to gather them because we want to build a, a paradigm of, uh, of love as the mm -hmm. larger economic container to, to give an alternative to the paradigm of fear, which is currently got our human beings trapped. And in the present moment, you can make a choice between the two. I just like your background. Like, how do you do that? I'm gonna learn how to do that. <laughs> well, are you on your phone or are you on your computer? I just got a computer uh, the other day from a buddy. He sent me his old uh, MacBook. It was his. So I'm gonna get some stuff loaded back onto it. And then I'm gonna start using that for my Zooms and my lives. Yeah, I mean, it's it's perfect, right? I mean, it's like your own broadcast yeah. and you can change what yeah. you want. And, uh, if yeah. you, I don't know on your phone, because maybe if you go to your bottom left and it says stop video, and if you click the button, it says choose virtual background. So I don't know on your phone if that's that way, because I think Zoom on the phone is a little bit different than Zoom on the computer. Yeah, I think so. Let me see. Hide my video in gallery view. Chat, raise hand. Yeah, it's okay. I'll just load that computer this week or whatever, and I'll start to figure it out. I've, I've never had a laptop before, so, oh, wow. you know. But yeah, those, I know. With those maps that you put out today, I, I, you, you just have incredible choice in finding great maps. Which map is it? Uh, the maps. You, was it you, you loaded about 60 maps about the human being on your, uh, oh. when you shared it today? Man, like, I just find stuff about how the human being energetically works at a, at a quantum mechanical vibrational level and I don't know like even like like the like the lamp uh, the lamp team uh, uh, um, amino acid it looks like a cross just stuff like that man like it's all like consciously created every little bit and piece of us is like a piece of hardware but yet it's like the software too it's really and people don't know about that they just think it's oh it's just a blood cell oh it's just a piece of skin <sighs> no man it's freaking technology i don't know well the, it just seems to me that your ability to find high level information and I mean, that was a large amount of maps all at once. And, and, but to do, you're doing it at such a high level. So I don't know, like, where do you get your pictures from? Internet. And I, and I have like on this phone, I probably have 20,000, 25,000 pictures. And on my other phone, I probably got about the same. So I don't know. I just, I see us as these quantum computers but we learn visually and audibly, you know, like neuro-linguistic programming. And we have to just do what they do, and, you know, the, all the assholes. We have to do it in a way to teach and to reteach humanity and to show them how simple, show them and program them because the visual comes on a line of sight like this. And the visual or the, and the audible, it, it cross sex like this, it crosses. It's always cross like a vector. And that's how it, this hits the neocortex and this hits the neocortex. And that's how we learn. And as long as you're staying in that, in that sign of light or that, that now moment and you're not getting like, then, then your amygdala won't get hijacked from fear or a different, a lower vibration coming in and it hijacks the neural cortex and it sends all your blood and your energy down. And so you don't, now you have this fight or flight 
I mean, it's 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 detailed. I mean, it's complicated, but it's not. Mm. I don't know. Like, I'm just like this quantum computer, man, and I feel like I'm almost autistic sometimes. But it's just like when you merge your personality and the and the soul together, like your personal pyramid comes together, you become this quantum computer, and you just you never stop. Mm. It's we it's crazy. Like I just get this downloads and uploads and to stay up for two days just kind of like Nikola Tesla did you know he just stood up right, for days and would research wouldn't eat and just how I feel so are you uh, teaching Sean have you ever taught anybody have you ever taught anyone the sort of the the way to learn or how you learn or how you how you sort of process information I I do man I did uh I did like one week. I was going to do like a 10 week neuro linguistic programming uh, on the live, yeah. but it just got too much, too much time and energy. I was spending at the time and I kind of got burnt out. And if I did it, you know, I was just going to do it like on a Zoom class because it's, it's just a higher level of learning. A lot of people don't get it. Because what, what I, this is what I just witnessed in you. I mean, in your group, which are the 50,000 people and, and probably let's say 500 of them were really paying attention. Yeah. And maybe a couple of hundred are like, sort of like hungry for more and waiting. And yeah. You're doing your live streams, it's anywhere between 50 and 300 or something like that, depending, right? But, but to me, what, what it, what's different is, is a, a container, like a course, where the people are there and they pay you money specifically to learn exactly what you want to teach, not sporadic kind of like the sequencing, because it, what happens in Facebook, the sequencing isn't going to be quite well, learn this first and then learn this first and then learn that you're, you're sending a lot in a kind of a shotgun all over the place, tons of valuable stuff, but it's not organized in such yeah. a manner that they're going yeah. to they're going to get it at a higher level. And it's just like playing pickup basketball and all of a sudden going in and, and getting practices, right? It's, it's, a, mm -hmm. it's a jump in how you're going to learn. And so I, th yeah. I personally feel that you're a, a master who needs a, a, a learning platform to bring people in to really share the, this high-end information that you have. And that's what like at the School of Conscious Communication, that's what I or we are looking for in terms of people who wouldn't ordinarily teach in normal schools. People who don't have, say, the PhDs or whatever after their names, but they've got knowledge that far exceeds 100 PhDs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and that's why, like, Jody comes into play because, like, like with some of the things that I offer, I'm going to offer to Jody is a master uh, botanist. Mm -hmm. She knows her plants, like, like, like I know the I don't know she I mean she's like like if you have any kind of ailment or anything she can say well you need this kind of her this herbal remedy with this I mean Jody tell us a little about something like you know I haven't I haven't done any botany but um I guess I'm a self-proclaimed herbalist and uh yeah I grow plants and herbs and um make teas and concoctions and do personalized brews for people and send them out. I don't charge money for my energy. I um, just enjoy it. And that's it. Wow. A hobby of mine. You teach? I love to grow. You, uh, do you pass on your knowledge to people, Jody? Um, yep. Yeah, I tell them, I give them the ingredients of the brew and um, why I'm putting that brew in there for them or that, that specific herb. And that's about it. How, how do you find Sean as a teacher? Um, for me, he's, he's a little bit all over the place, jumping from one thing to the other. And uh, it's a little chaotic. So. But what about the, I mean, the, um, the type of information he's sharing? Yeah, the type of information is interesting, absolutely. But it's just the methodology and the sequencing. Yeah, maybe, perhaps. Um, I don't love <coughs> to watch videos. I don't 
I don't really watch YouTube videos, and so I know that he gets a lot of his knowledge from watching a fair amount of YouTube videos. And it's not that I don't want to give my attention to that. It's just that I don't want to look at a screen for that long. Right. Well, it, it doesn't keep my attention, no matter what the content is. Um, so what does, so, so that's good that you say that. So what does keep your attention for you? For me, I guess it's just uh, things that I'm personally interested in. So, but how do you learn? Like I learn, like I listen to a lot of things and I watch, like I'll watch a video. Most videos are just audible, but it'll be something you know, like a screen that is, you know, but I'll listen, but then I'll, I teach with like the videos to show people what I'm talking about. So people can enter know, oh, mm -hmm. that's what he means by that or something. So how do you learn best? Well, mm. I guess it's a good question. I don't know. I don't know how I learn best. I guess I learn best by experience. From what I experience, well, yeah. I, I have a, a pretty good inner knowing and intuition. So when uh, things come, when information comes across to me, I have a really good um, sense of whether I resonate with that information or not. And then if I do, I absorb it. And if I don't, I, I don't absorb it. That's just kind of how it works for me. Mm. Anything yeah. that's not relevant or uh, I don't feel resonates with me, I, I just don't pay any attention to it. Which is why I stay off of YouTube most of the time. I know there's a lot of good stuff on there, but... What, what do you think about, like, I think my original question of like balancing a romantic life with sort of the larger political situation. And I think that in a lot of cases, the division between the man and the woman is the man is in his head and he's, he's, he sort of like sees the big fight and the woman just wants to focus on life and children and food and all the good things in life. Uh, and is this... <laughs> I don't. I don't know if that's a fair statement. She said that all women are focused on the, the home and children and food and the good life. Um, I've I've raised my kids. My kids are grown. I do have a couple sweet little grandbabies, but um, I'm uh, I'm here for the rebuild. So I have my I have my own mission, which immediately aligns with shots. That's interesting that you brought that up because the three D programming has taught women to just focus on this, right, and focus on just raise some kids and do you know. But I think as we get to this new paradigm, I I see like even the women and men like we have like different a whole new way to of living. Of uh, that you know, like, like you said, I'm here for the rebuild. Like me, I came here to take some ass and chew bubble gum and, and tear down the system and be here for the rebuild. Hi. Oh, I think it's all about finding balance. Your own personal balance. Mm -hmm. I agree. Do you, do you find that Sean's focus on planetary evolution like, is that part of the rebuild? Is that like the, the larger container that you see? Or do you see more like the community level? I, I see the community level coming first because that's where a lot of people are at. They, they see, you know, they see themselves exiting the matrix, if you will. And mm -hmm. so I think that what, where Sean's at is what comes next after that, after people realize that there are better ways. And then that knowledge will come just like as, as people, um, human beings as, and animals in nature as we reproduce. I mean, it's once, once they feel comfortable to, um, that once they feel safe and secure, that's when they reproduce and, and have, right? And it's, it's no different once people are in these communities and they feel safe to start learning about these new things and forgetting all of the previous um, 
<laughs> programming that they were uh, through. And that's, that's a healing process in itself. So people need that space, that safe space to be able to do the healing. And then, and then the um, absorption of the knowledge comes after that uh, is what I feel. That doesn't that's mean harsh. that that's not the case for you. What about if, for the people? Everybody learns differently and at different paces and we're all at different stages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I was just wondering about the people who are in the big cities that are separated, don't have community. They're learning about all this conspiracy information. They're, they're yeah. taking it in in a, in a large way, but they don't have that type of healing and they don't have that type of place to go to. Exactly. And, and that, them and themselves right now, those cities, the amount of energy that's being harvested from that is incredible. And, and I mean, they, they know to extent to an extent um, what they're contributing to that and um, diving into all these rabbit holes and stuff. But it's like, if you can see it, it's, it's, um, it's a lot. Like I've been learning for people to get the fuck out of the cities for a few years now. Like just start leaving, just start leaving these cities, please leave them abandoned, get out of them. I think that's key. Um, I don't think people can feel safe and heal and grow in, in these energy harvesting centers where they have um, been. They're human farms, you know, and I like how, Elijah, I really like how you brought, and brought that up. Um, you know, there has to be a step towards a new community and, and a whole new paradigm. But I like what you just touched on, brother, because you said, how can we get people to start to heal? Well, maybe first, before we even talk about building communities, maybe we just have start having nationwide, you know, community get-togethers, nationwide conferences and retreats, and then global retreats. So we get, so now, not just going on a Zoom call, but now we have a, 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 an event that we have on the East, west and and center part of the u.s and in canada all parts of the world and we come together and then now we have a retreat or conference where the heck you want to call it i don't care but it's something where it brings like-minded higher vibe humans and galactics with ha have a a wanting of higher knowledge and gathering and creating new ideas and that will be i think a good focal point to bring the 3D humans in and say, oh, hey, you know, I know a sister named, my friend Stacy, she's been talking about this, this mind, body, soul retreat by these people and it's like galactic, I don't know, it's some kind of something, but I, I just feel it might be good for me. I don't know, you wanna go check it out? Cause I've been watching these things on the social media, you know, and we get people interested through these types of platforms and then we go make an event. And now, even if we brought 10 new people who didn't have any knowledge of galactic or anything, we don't talk about conspiracy. We don't talk about the old system. We don't talk about secret space program. We talk about new communities, positivity, and all the good stuff, and healing centers, and how the body works, and, and, and growing your food, and why it's important to be vegan, all these things. So the human being can walk out of that four or five day conference and they can apply that knowledge and leave and it, and it helps to in, in betterment or make their life better and then empower themselves. And now they take all that knowledge and wisdom and they go take it and they bring it back to their community so they start with themselves. Mm -hmm. I think that could be the start of, because we can't build Rome in a year. We can't build new earth five years so can, can i add to that it's because sure. i love your idea and i love your enthusiasm and, and that's kind of what has yeah. been happening already um you know there's there's re these retreats and conferences and you know two three four five day events um but it's been a lot of effort and energy that's gone into um something that is only temporary and so I feel that there's a lot of people on this planet that are ready for that next step. And that is um, 
creating these communities now. They've already got the vision, they've got the knowledge, you know, they've got the um, uh, motivation. They're lacking, okay, where do we go now? Where, where can we go to do this? Where, where can we start to build? And that's where I'm at is that, um, you know, where, A, where's outside of the jurisdiction of the public health authorities? There's got to be a jurisdiction, there, there's got to be outside. If, if, they, if they control a specific jurisdiction, okay, where's outside of that jurisdiction? Because I'd like to start there. Mm. That's plan A. And then uh, the second part of it, I guess, is um, uh, being in a climate that is habitable because <laughs> right now where I live uh, it's unlikely that I'm going to start um, building extensively when I have a five month um, building period and it's winter and it's permafrost and all that so for me personally I, I see myself relocating to a warmer desirable climate mm. You're breaking up, Jody. You're breaking up. Oh. Well, I, I, oh, hi, Keisha. Let's all say hi, Keisha. <laughs> her, her internet has problems, so she, she's worrying about flickering on and off, I think. But Keisha, if, if you can come on, that would be great. Um, yeah, hi. How are you? Oh, she is here. All right. Doing good, Keisha. Are you going to show yourself, or what's going on? Um, I'm just, my data really sucks out here. She was just talking about leaving the city. Um, that's one of the downsides to being out here in the country. And I usually rely on my hotspot even for my cell phone, but I mean, rely on my internet even for myself because my data, I usually only get like one bar. So I can't even, my video won't even pull up right now. Okay. Okay. So you've been here this whole time. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm listening. I'm just listening. <laughs> Okay, well, maybe I'll do a little bit of an introduction for Keisha uh, first. Yeah. And uh, what you have Sean and Jody here with with you, as you can see, and they they are a couple. And uh, Sean and I spoke a week ago, and we started to really connect around creating larger global uh, media systems and uh, national and provincial and state sort of planetary organizational levels and starting to look at how to build infrastructure across the whole planet and bring people together. And that was the main aim of this chat right now is to go, okay, well, what will we do? What could we do? And as, as you know, I've been working on a plan and I have a, a number of designs and Sean uh, has a great network of people that he's been connecting with. And uh, Jody and he have been looking at perhaps how to build community out in, on the real land and how to attract people perhaps to that land. And, Keisha is, uh, I think, um, at the same level of philosophy in terms of not buying into the regular government indoctrination and not buying into any of the sort of uh, dogma and looking at whatever is happening in terms of the control mechanisms coming into play. And so Keisha is, is another sort of, to me, fountain of truth on the internet. Both of you have met just on the internet, just in Facebook. And you're one of the few people I really pay attention to because I feel the truth coming out of you is, is very strong. And I learn a lot by paying attention to what you write. And so that said, I was maybe like to ask a sort of question about the kind of background context of the election. And Keisha, maybe we start with you and ask you, what do you think has, is happening right now? And what do you think is going to happen? And do you even care about it? Um, right now, honestly, I'm probably just a little entertained by it. Um, a whole lot like the ruling class must be. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm assuming the ruling class is too. So um, I see a big old PSYOP. You know, this is a psychological operation to get people to continue to fight each other. Um, there can be no civil discourse in politics because it's based on the idea that some people are right and others are wrong. So that division is always gonna be there. That is, I believe the purpose and the basis of the foundation of politics. That's, I mean, it's a, a game. It's like um, WWE, you know? So <laughs> since nobody 
a lot of people seem to just ignore 